All right, you might have heard of the Stortus and Hare story. It's one of the tales we grew up with, right? But here's the fun question. Why do tortoises win race in stories? I mean, come on. In real life, we know tortoise is much, much, much slower than a hare. Like it's not even close. But still, somehow, always, in this particular story, the tortoise wins. Why? You know the moral of the story? Slow and steady wins the race. It's wise. It's catchy. But wait a second. Do we actually know the physics behind it? Do we know the science behind this whole thing? Let's find out if we can explain why exactly the tortoise won this race. Scientifically. Let's break it down. Now, if you look at speed qualitatively, we always talk about how fast or slow things go. That's how we experience motion in real life. Imagine a race between a snail, a bicycle and a rocket blasting off into the space. While lined up, right? They can all cover up same distance eventually. But what makes them feel so different is how fast each, e each one eats up the distance. That's what speed captures. But here's the interesting part. The phrase, how fast, is most often used to describe how quickly something is moving at a speed at a specific instant. Speed is quite simply how quickly distance changes with time. Let's look at another example. Remember that race we saw when we were measuring time? Yeah, the red guy, the blue guy and the yellow guy, right? So if you look at them right now, you can feel it. Blue is the fastest, red is the slowest and instinctively we just know. We watch the move and say, yep, red is the slowest, blue is the fastest and yellow, yeah, yellow is just slow. That's the character of the motion. That's what we mean when we are looking at motion qualitatively, based on how it feels. But here is the thing. In this example, sure, blue is fast, faster, red is slowest and yellow is somewhere in between. But how much faster? How much slower? Feelings are great, but are they enough for science? Not really. Science needs numbers. So that's what we are going to do now. Let's look at speed quantitatively. All right. So how do we do that? So we are going to measure the distance traveled by each of these races and we are going to calculate the time, right? We have got our trusty digital stopwatch ready to measure exactly how long each one takes. And here we go. We have the data already. So we can see that all of them are covering the same distance of 20 meters. Uh, the red takes 10 seconds, blue takes 4 seconds and yellow takes 8 seconds. Now that we have got some data, that is distance and time, here is where it gets interesting. Scientists have figured out a wonderfully simple trick. If you take the distance an object travels and divide it by time it takes, you get speed. Exactly quantitatively, that's how we measure fast and slow. So technically speaking, speed is just how quickly or how much distance an object covers in certain amount of time. And when we put that into the math form, we get speed is equal to distance upon time. Now let's take a look at the device measuring speed. All right, so uh, we got an F1 car here and this one belongs to Louis Hamilton. Yeah, it's a Mercedes pretty sleek car, right? Now, what you see on screen, that number, that's the speed at that particular instant, which is why we call it instantaneous speed. And that number you are seeing, that's what we call the speedometer reading. The device doing all this magic that is measuring the speed, it's called the speedometer, right? Here is how it works. Inside the car, there are these tiny sensors that track how much the wheel has traveled the distance and it also records time. It divides that distance by that tiny split second of a time and boom, this classic distance divided by time calculation is done instantly by car's computer or the speedometer. And just like that, you get the speed reading in uh, real time. Okay, now let's watch the speed. Okay, it's increasing, 339, 340, it's touching, uh, and then it's slowing down. Yeah, it's a corner. Uh, yeah, speed is dropping, picking up again. Yeah, it's picking up again. See, the driver's speed is in constant, it's always changing. Speeding up, speeding now, now speeding up again. Got it? That's how we measure and understand instantaneous speed. Now, here is a, another question to think about. If the car took one minute to cover full circuit of five kilometers, how fast was the car? Pretty simple question, right? Now, obviously the speed was in the same entire time. You just saw that the speed kept changing, right? It was speeding up, slowing down the corners. So we are not talking, we're not going to talk about instantaneous speed anymore. If somebody asks you, what is the speed of the car when it completes five kilometer track in one minute, we are looking at a different kind of speed called the average speed. Average speed is simply the total distance divided by the total time taken. 
it gives us the average of all the different speeds over the entire journey whether it's speeding up slowing down it doesn't matter what matters is the total how much distance it has traveled and how much time it has taken while earlier we were zooming in on one particular moment with instantaneous speed now we are zooming out to look at the whole picture so in our f1 situation here the car covers five kilometer in one minute since one minute is one by 60 hour we'll do this conversion thing later in another video all right stay tuned for that but since we want to calculate the speed in kilometer per hour i'm converting it into one by 60th of an hour now do the math and we get 300 kilometer per hour as the average speed again remember this is not the speed at every moment around corners it was definitely going slower on straight stretches it probably went faster than 300 but this 300 kilometer is the overall average for the whole lap and that brings us back to our good old story of tortoise and hare that we started with right now we know their speed all right the tortoise moves at 0.2 km per hour and the hare at 56 km per hour by this speed what we mean is the instantaneous speed all right so what actually happened in the race we have to find the average speed to figure out what really happened in the race so they had a let's say 1000 meter race that is distance is equal to one kilometer and let's say the time taken by the tortoise is four hour and time taken by the hare is five hours why did hare take five hour because remember in the story hare slept hare thought i am lightning fast i can even beat him in a in a matter of a second but he slept off and the overall distance he covered took five hours if you look at their average speed it is very evident that the tortoise covered one kilometer in four hours and his speed is 0.25 kilometer per hour whereas the hare covered one kilometer in five hours and his average speed okay it's not the speed it's average speed is 0.2 kilometer per hour clearly the average speed of tortoise is greater than average speed of hare so that's the moral of the story the one with higher average speed wins the race